Hello YouTube, it is Damien. It is The Dream Returns here at Newcastle. It's episode five of the beta, and today we are gonna play Manchester United. We're top of the Premier League here in season one. It's definitely not realistic because they are nowhere near top, but they just been spanked Liverpool 5 0. I'm still chuffed with that, it's great. Um, but yeah, we are gonna play him here, and there's a reason why we're gonna play him. It's because the form we've been on has been fantastic. There's also a second reason why we're here. A couple of days before West Ham, we'll get into that because there's a few things happening. And yeah, uh, there is. Since changing into this 4-2-4, full term, tweaking it a little bit, going through the data analysis, watching those games, that data hub saves lives, I tell ya. But since we're going through the data hub, we're going through the games, we went through all the moments and expected like chance conversions and everything, I have gone in and gone bang. We have done it. And I said, look, since we last met, we got Liverpool, Everton, City. I would have taken three points from this. We beat Liverpool 2-1. We were, we were 1-0 down inside. You know, I'm just going to show you the goals. We were 1-0 down inside 11 seconds, lads. 11 seconds, and we had kickoff. Great stuff. Um, Danny Sabahs, who scores a long-range goal, just forgot we were playing football. Um, but yeah, here we go, Mane. Yeah, he doesn't miss. Sits the brunker down. There you go. But we, uh, we got going. We got out of second gear, and we found goals. And yeah, look, it was good. Um, as you can see, Eric Dyer shots bot. I love the reaction of Allison there because in real life, a keeper would react to that. Um, and then Tobias outside the boot bangs it, and then Rafinha free kick. The match momentum though in this game here. <laughs> yeah, uh, we copped it. We, we definitely copped it by Liverpool, even though the stats say that we didn't. We, in terms of the momentum, and that's the new way you know you've been FM. We did it. Speaking about momentum, if we go to the data hub and we go to matches and last matches, as you can see here. We go to the Liverpool game, um, second half map momentum, pretty much with Liverpool. We had a period though against Liverpool where we were dominant, we got back to one or we should have scored, and then after we went 2-1 up, the boys just seemed to switch off. This game here was annoying, because we really could have been six points from six. We dominated, uh, we, go, we went and dominated Everton for the full game, and it looks like when you dominate teams for the full game, Teams that are good in the air are just going to beat you or draw with you. And we needed a 90-something minute here equaliser. 94th minute. Um, just look at their goals. And apparently it's been noted in the SI forums that the, that um, AI attacking corners are too overpowered. But everyone flies in. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how the ball comes in. They score. But look at it. Ball in. And like was good in the air. Bang. There's one. Right? And get ready for the second one that he scores as well. Um, and yeah, well, like we lose the ball, and uh, yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, mistake from Pickford, by the way, for the second one. And like, we lose the ball for one again, Pierre wins a header over three guys. I think this is it. Like, it's literally one against three when this ball's whipped in. And like, to be fair, he's in a good area, but he's got to be Sour Makers, Callum Wilson, I don't know why he's there, Willock's here, and I don't know why Mancini's not here. So, look, maybe he deserves the score, and he gets a good leap, right? But it's another headed goal. And they seem to just fly in headers. And when you have headers, and we've had on stream another DCL header, um, we've had Joe Pedro against Arsenal. Obviously, you saw it last episode. We've had a couple of moments with Joe Pedro where it's a header for us in the same highlight and we put it wide. It, it's been noted in the SI forums that the AI, when it comes to headering slash or attacking corners, has been way too overpowered. And I feel like it's going to be changed. We then played Manchester City. And I don't have too much good data for this, and I'm just spoiled what I'm gonna go into there as well. Um, maybe you haven't seen it. Um, City were probably the better side. We had a very high dominance level just towards the end of the half with one little spike. And there we are. And look, we were. Newcastle were dominant a little bit more here, and then we got the lead, and City got the lead, and we scored again. But look, I can't fault the boys. Cannot fault the boys at all. I've spoiled it again. There's a reason why we're here. We've made a new signing. You've seen the name now. So it ruins it. But it's how I've signed him. Anyhow, we played City and, well, we beat Manchester City. We beat Liverpool, we beat the City, and we drew to Everton of all teams. Um, yeah, anyway, good build up play here. Unreal. But the reason why we're also here is Danny Ceballos has scored goal of the year. And the goal we have scored is fantastic. And the highlights, why I love the match engine this year. Now, we've won the ball here. He's about to score a screamer. I get that. Just get ready for the movement. Ah, that, that was too early. Because it's a great team goal, and we went through it on stream, and like it's the perfect goal. Well, we need to go from where we win the ball, but... So if I go 10 seconds more, ah, it's baby from here, when they win the ball long, right? Ball gets headed, we win it back. 
Here we go. Important tonight, when Lascelles gets the ball or Mancini gets the ball, look at the forward, the press. Look how tight their lines are. Very tight, very squeezed, not much in. Unless Mancini slips Sabahs, who turns and slips one into this space straight away, we're not getting out. He might actually be able to fireball into St. Maxim, but if that's read by Sanchez, they win it, right? And in the end, I like their press. They go and press Joe Willock, who's the obvious option to play. And in the end, Danny gets the ball, we keep it. Now, one thing that you get to when you teach as coaches, and it's good they put it in the match engine, is don't burn the ball. Like, go probe the spaces, probe their press, as you can see here. Let midfielders drop in and only play when it breaks down. As you can see, Ferrian Torres is the man that lets us out the press eventually. They keep it very well, right? And they, they line up in a typical V press. It's a 2v2, one's going to press, the other one's going to cover the six, so they can play the centre back. It's important in this situation. Real life coaching, I love to put it in the match engine. The centre backs will keep the ball with each other. You know, that's it. The cells drop off two extra yards so he can invite the press and we can play now. The cells gives it back to Mancini, drops off again, and now Danny Sabas has crept in. Perfect. Right, gets on the ball here. And, you know, now Ferrian's made a choice. He's gone, well, shit, we've caught him out here, right, because the boys have eaten the pressure. They've eaten the press on, they've brought it onto him. And now because Sabas has dropped in deep as a deep line playmaker, we can, we're out. Torres has come too far across. There we are. Secondary movement, Rafinha starts wider. But this is why I love the narrowness of the tactic. The tactic's really working. Is Rafinha's initial movement is the inside. Makes Walker make a decision to follow him or to cut off this passing lane for Grimaldo. He doesn't. And what the movement is, is really good here is Joe Pedro. He made his move to now put the ball up in the channel. And now we're just going to let it play. Because City has to defend this part of it well. Danny Sabaya scores a well though. Rafinha... Ball into Ceballos. Watch him drop off again to get on the ball. Here we are. One touch. Pick it out. Top bins. Thanks for coming. We've just built out our Barcelona-esque. We've invited the City press on. And we've absolutely gone. See you later. There's the, there's the mistake. Bang. Liverpool-like against Manchester United when Greenwood let us out and we scored the first. Difference is, is that Liverpool carved the whole City up. We did well. Got the moment. And then obviously City uh, found, a, found a transitional phase back into making it from being unorganised or in an organised defensive position, but Sabahs had enough time to hit one, and well, they seem to go in a lot this year on FM so far, and it did. Now, other reason why we're here, we've made transfer signings that are coming in, right? And we are gonna to touch on the one that's coming in right now, because we're about to confirm it. Um, FM, hello? Hello, football manager. Don't crash. By the way, against City after that game, we saved the game mercifully, and then we went through the highlight to explain that, what we just explained on stream, because we're live on stream, links down below. Um, and uh, the game crashed. Uh, so just make sure you make your saves. I don't know why this is taking so long for the manager. FM. It's going to crash, isn't it? <laughs> In the middle of an episode, it's going to crash. And I, I'm telling you right now, if it crashes, so be it. Look, at the end of the day, David Ayres is the one we need to talk about. The reason why we need to talk about it, 3.2 million. Trend, I don't know what Ajax are doing. They weren't playing him. Listed him for 3.2 million because he didn't. He was going to. He wants to leave on a free. And I was like, yep, that's for me. By the way, Nico, 7 mil, work permit guaranteed. Liam Delat this year looks amazing on FM. And City would let me, let me have him for less than 20 million. 8 million up front, 19 million over clauses. Backup striker in the 4 2 4 because it's definitely working. Unbelievable. Just FM. Okay, we're, we're back alive now. There we are. But yeah, David Neres, 3.2 million. I do not know why. Apparently, according to the game, they do not have a current role for him to play in, even though he's probably. Ajax's best player. If I go to general, it's actually do some damage. Okay, interesting. I wouldn't have said Neres would have been better, but it's fine. Look how good he is. He, by the way, wants to be on a squad contract for 3.2 million. Thank you very much. I'm telling you right now, I'm now signed a backup centre mid, a backup winger either side, and a backup striker. And that's the one thing that I look at in this squad is we lack depth on the bench. We've got Fraser now, and Miguel Miron is not bad. Dyer's not getting into the team at the minute. Uh, so probably another one that's not bad to have on the bench. For me, Jamel Lewis is decent enough. If I can find a right back and a centre back that are under the age of 21 so they don't have to be registered because our squad's so massive, I'm loving life. So those are the two signings we'll make and you guys will see that when they come around as well. But anyhow, that's going to be the end of this little part here from Damo. We have gone and, and scored an amazing goal against Manchester City. We have beaten Liverpool, beaten City, drew to Everton, where we should have really won, and we just signed David Neres for $3.2 million. That is correct. 3.2, not 32, 3.2 million. If that ain't the steal of the window, well, probably Danny Sabas for 650K is the steal of the window, let's be honest. If these two aren't the steal of the windows that you've seen so far on FM, I'd like you to comment below what you have done that is better business than that. I'll see you guys in a second. Manchester United, you can tell I'm pumped. We're playing top today.
And I tell you, the way we're going, we could maybe just roll them like Liverpool did at Old Trafford. Welcome back YouTube. It is time to play United here on the 15th of December here at Old Trafford. And look, they are absolutely reeling after a big loss to Leeds last game out. Just had a look at their last game stats in the data hub. They just got done 2-4 and Leeds pummeled them into the ground. So um, yeah, look, this Leeds side, watch out for them because they're currently sitting in the four. I don't know what's going on in FM, but they are apparently fantastic. Something I wish I could see in real life, to be fair. Liverpool back top of the tree, but we now play United and it's a big game. As for ourselves, a little unlucky here. A little lucky at times too. A game of two halves. West Ham dominated us all half, first half. Second half, according to the match momentum, may as well just show you. Um, they had one chance, one whole chance in the second half of that game. And they scored it. And yeah, look, they had a chance in the 94th minute. They've only shot in the whole half. And they scored in the 94th minute. Bit annoying. So when I said to David Moyes that low on, that we that we deserve to win, it was based on the fact that the whole second half where the game had its goals in, we dominated. And we could have been two or three goals up by the time they scored their, theirs and make it one all. By the way, that look, we're undefeated in a long old while. And that's probably going to come to end today here at Old Trafford. Let's be honest, right? It should at least. Considering the players that we have out at the minute, because we've got to go through that too. Um, there's a lot of draws in here. We led against Arsenal 2-0. Two, two we led against Spurs. We led 1-0 and 2-1 against Everton and absolutely played them off the park. And we led against West Ham to the 93rd minute. That's an extra, what, nine points? Take off the three points that we had for the draws. So two, four, that's an extra six points. And I, right now, that puts me on 30 points. I'm three points behind Leeds. I'm currently ahead of Man City. I'm well inside the top top uh, top half. And yeah, it is what it is. What's my confidence even looking like at the minute? No, can we see that? The match preparation, medical center, promises, scouting, squad, team, training. No, it doesn't look like I can see. Head coach performance, that's the one. So we're on a B negative. Right now, that would be an A, is what I'm trying to say. Now, we do have some injuries here. Callum Wilson, training injury. Down the hamstring. Joe Willow, abdominal strain, training injury. Eric Dyer, not 100% fit because he played the last game with a broken lower arm. Um, Basuma, still not back yet from injury. He's been out this whole time in this form. And Salmate is not 100% fit, but he's going to start. But Dyer's out, and it, look... As much as I don't like to do it, Isaac Hayden does do well as a ball winning midfielder. So uh, look, he's going to start. He's currently complaining that he wants to go out on loan. I don't want him to. But uh, yeah, and that means I've got to place that Maxim up top, and I've got to move Ryan Fraser out wide. I don't like Fraser out wide personally. Uh, I like him, but he's not like my guy. Like this is where if we had David Neres right now. No dramas. This is where we had um, the lap at the minute. So Maxim can play, and the lap could play up top. This is where Nico comes in. Nico can come in into this role here. The signings that would help this is coming. We have a good 11 now, and we have a good tactic, now we just need the squad. Um, and the squad's coming, it's just, it's just too early for us, unfortunately, at the minute to have these injuries in now. Anyway, the brother in goals, sale makers, Mancini, Lascelles, who's been fantastic, the, the match rating may not say it, but he's been great. Um, Lewis is coming out here for Grimaldo, he played the last game to rest Grimaldo for this game. Sabios, Hayden, Fraser, Rafinha out there. He's been our most important player. Joe Pedro and St. Maxim up top I do not like, but it is what it is. I could play Dwight Gale up top for the first time this season. Screw it. Dwight Gale, get your moment. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? Dwight Gale. Is it like a big game by any chance? Fairly consistent. Joyce will be matched. All right, Dwight Gale up top. What a hero. Just last minute change. Dwight Gale up top. And there we are. Just allow St. Max and Rafinha to be in their best areas. And I feel that's going to be needed. This United side, unlike in real life, are playing absolutely amazing. I wish they were a bit more like real life. I would love FM to be realistic on Manchester United for once. They love United, and I don't know why. Like that, for the last few years on FM, they should be a side that do what like Arsenal do, or you see the occasional Liverpool side do on the last couple of years on FM. But they just come 11th out of nowhere. Um, look, just go out there and just do what you need to do, boys. I have faith in yous. I, I really, really, really do feel that yous guys will be okay. I do feel that today. And ask the assistant here. I am going to go and show Luke Shaw, Wamba Sucker, Mason Greenwood, and Ronaldo like that. And I'm not going to get too drawn in the tightly marking Ronaldo, I don't think. Oh, my assistant said so. That's all right. I'm going to show Ronaldo onto his left foot, by the way. You know, we can show Greenwood away from goal. He's either footed. Um, but uh, I prefer him to be on his right further away. For me, Wamba Sucker, actually, don't press. Wamba Sucker's not going to be one to bomb on. I don't know how he has to crossing. I've never seen a guy cross, but... Um, yeah, look, it is what it is. It's a pretty good side. I don't understand how in real life this guy does not play for him. I do not get that at all. 
Uh, but yeah, Scott McTomery pulled Pogba in the middle of the park. If this was in real life, I would be like, well, they're playing one in the middle of the park. Fantastic. Bruno is Bruno. Greenwood's Greenwood. Like, they all look good this year, don't they? You know, Ronaldo still looks, oh my. They gave him 15 speed. Oh, they gave him 15 pace this year. That is ridiculous. And yeah, like, it's a pretty good side. Marcus Rashford's on the bench. It's probably because he's been unfit. He's fantastic too. Anyhow, into the tunnel we go. Look, we have not lost in a month and a half. More than that, two months and a half. About that, two and a half months. Who knows what could happen? United in the red, we're in the black and the white. Famous colours. You just never know. Pogba, Cavani, Ronaldo, Lascelles, one attack with Rafinha, Grimaldo, good on the ball, Lascelles, Dubravka, he just goes long. I guess he felt like there was pressure. Dwight Gale didn't win it. Pogba brings it down. Don't give him that much room. And Bruno Fernandes going on a run. Bruno, ball through to Cavani, Dubravka makes a save. Yeah, Paul McShane was on the bench, Dick. What's your um, score prediction, by the way? Obviously live on Twitch, so if you want to watch these games live, join us. Lascelles! Joe Pedro! Oh my god, how does he... What is with Joe Pedro in YouTube episodes missing clear-cut chances? Lascelles flicks it on and Pedro's inside the six-yard box, open net, hits the post. And watch them score from the corner. Mancini heads away. Greenwood gets on it. Can burn men for fun, and he does. And he runs inside, he goes for goal wide. Thank Christ. Oh, how does Joe Pedro miss that, man? That's one of the misses of the year. We should be one new up. 3-2 win Dem reckons. I don't see that happening. I see us getting... I, it's going to be a result of one all for us at the minute. United look like they're dominating. Oh, falls back to him too. That's a goal. <sighs> Bit unfortunate there. Because Greenwood's played a ball in. That's probably not going to work. And it's fallen back to him. Once Pogba gets it in that area, you just know how this game has been programmed with long-range shooting. It's not from distance. And I like that those go in, to be fair. It's Paul Pogba, who's a world-class midfielder, as much as I don't like to say that, he is. With time and space, he should be putting a top in from there. Let's be honest, right? It's 1-0. I have no qualms at the finish. It's more the fact that it falls back to Greenwood. We're 1-0 down. Danny Sabayas, boy out of Rafinha. Just keep it now. That's it. We don't need to go gun ho We know we know how to score. Ball towards Pedro. That's not on, though. Just need to keep the ball a little bit there. Greenwood now. Bruno Fernandes, it's going to be 2-0 if we're not careful. It's going to be 2 0 if we're not careful. Ronaldo. It's got to be 2 0, boys. I'm just going to tell you right now end product of Ronaldo shouldn't be bad. Pogba. Yeah. Wow. What a hit. Two goals inside a minute from Pogba from two areas that are unreal finishes. Yeah, right. Huh. What a goal that is. I don't think he has any right to finish that like that, but uh, the first one definitely. Wow, yeah, fair enough. Bang, 2 0 down to two Pogba bombs. Wish it was like real life, Pogba wouldn't even be getting in those areas from deep. Oh, I'll rephrase, he would get in those areas, there would be no end product, and then he doesn't chase back. Yeah, right, well, that's pretty much all she wrote here. And it's a free kick. Bruno headed, great save, and then knocked in. Now, the fact that the lines will run back to here makes me think the lines will just think it's offside, so this is going to be goal given, and we're 3-0 down. Well, YouTube, we've been on a good run of form, and yeah, it is what it is. We're now 3-0 down to Manchester United at Old Trafford. Yeah, I, I can't really say too much. We've been dominated. They've had 16 shots and a half of football. If Pogba did this in real life, we'd get Ballon d'Or. Yeah, he'll get Ballon d'Or based on run result. I agree with that. I agree with that totally. Anyhow, it's okay, that, that is the nut low. That is the worst thing that could have happened was getting an injury to one of the big boys and St. Maxian's coughed it. That ain't good. That is not good at all. Oh, my. We are copping injuries, left, right, and centre, by the way. All right, Rafinha's had a stinker. I'm just going to get Miguel and Miron out there before he gets injured. There goes a 10-game unbeaten run, 100%. I'm not changing system either. We could actually change system just for the lulls. Why not? Luke Shaw, good ball in, Cavani, heads over. I don't know what. For the lulls, this game's over. Five at the back. We haven't seen it at all. I might as well show you it. Dwight Gale, Hayden, Amira, Andre Pedro. Get Joe Pedro in there for Dwight Gale, why not? And we'll get a... Uh, um, Eric Dyer's not really fit for that, though. 
gonna get Eric Dyer on anyway. You know, Jamal Lewis is complaining about match. I don't have any more subs. Uh, right. Never mind, cancel that all. I was going to show you the five at the back. I don't have enough changes to do it. I've already made two changes, so Jamal Lewis is going to come off the sale makers before he gets injured. And I'm only doing that because Jamal Lewis, by the way, is complaining at match time. Look, when you cop it like this, you just cop it, right? You just Whatever it is, it is. Such is life. We're not here to battle United, even though I don't think they're great in real life. But, yeah. And Miguel Amir on. Ball in. Can we get a goal? We don't. And there's going to be Rashford on the break burning people. Let's... Let's let's just watch. Yep, there he beats one. And he probably beats a second now. And no, I mean Chidi does well, Frazier. Don't burn it. But don't lose it. Oh, you, you get rid of the ball, you know. One of those days at the office, boys. And the fact that we allow lost St. Maxim for a decent amount of time. I had no Callum Wilson. Joe Pedro's had a stinker as long as Dwight Gale. Um, yeah, Grimaldo's had a stinker. Like, everyone not played well. The fact this was only 3 0 was good. The unbeaten run is over. We have been absolutely mick flogged. Look, yeah. Look, I like it, boys. It's one of those things. You just you just do this. We played what? How many games have we played in the short space of time? I'm not gonna make too many excuses here, but there's He's got three to four weeks. Uh, look, the only thing about these injuries, there are a lot of three to four week injuries, at least. Um, we now got Leeds in three days' time. Oh, we are spent. We are just spent. Um, but yeah, look at look at how close these games have been. The first, the fourth, the twelfth, fifteenth, eighteenth, and we have no real rotation. Like these games have been big, and then like the twenty seventh and the first, you know, it's only a few days' game. Then then here, yeah, then a break, and then these two straight back to back. You know, the games are coming thick and fast, and our squad just can't deal with it just yet. But the positive is, is that we've climbed out of this hole that we're in here. We now sit 12th, which the board probably won't like that we're sitting 12th. But at the same stage for me, you know, we, we beat Leeds. It may happen, but as long as we beat Burnley, we may get a result against Leeds, then it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. And from there, we got Chelsea, which is going to be difficult. But then we got those runner games that we should have done well in at the start of the year that we didn't do well at the minute. And we're going to give you some of that, YouTube. Like, next episode, we're going to give you... And I'm remaining optimistic. I'm probably going to give you Brentford Palace, maybe, in the middle of the window. Oh, we lost to Norwich, actually. So maybe I might give you Palace Norwich or Norwich Brighton. It'd be something like that. I might come in for Norwich Brighton, recap the transfer business, give you two big games that hopefully have gone on a winning run again. Um, and look, just... On paper, those should be the games that we should be winning. Should be is the key word. It didn't happen at the start of the year. We need to amend that. And if we amend that, we're going to finish top half. Um, and that is for sure. Look, through this tricky run of fixtures, we've been really good. We haven't lost in how many games? Let's be honest. Let's, let's tally it up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 games undefeated. I can't, you know. And we play Liverpool, Arsenal, Spurs, and City in all of that. Leicester are no mugs either, nor West Ham. Is taking a Man United side that have had Pogba go ballistic against me to beat me. And look, to be fair, Man United, they're just overpowered in FM. So I'm optimistic and happy with how things are gone. The transfers are the real reason why we've been here. Unbelievable. It, it showed. We have a team, we lack a squad, and when injuries creeping up, and I feel like there's a lot of injuries on the beta and a lot of long range goals and a lot of goals from quarters for the AI. If we could get the right players in, and we're starting to do that, I think we're a centre-back and a full-back away from having a very good squad. We will challenge for the top half, and you never know, we might just sneak in towards the 7th, 6th and 5th place spots if the league stays as tight as it is. Anyhow, from Damon and everybody else here, let me know in the comment section below where you think I will finish. Who should I sign in January? Because we've still got, you know, $25 million to spend, and I'm pretty sure the board would give me more for ask. Um, and yeah, if you like the episode, give it a like. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel. I think the long term here looks really good. And I'll see you for the next episode. We'll be towards the end of the transfer window in January. And hopefully it's another banger. I'll see you then. Thank you and goodbye.